What is the difference between joins and relationships in Tableau? So maybe you tried to read documentation on this and it was super confusing. So in this video, I'm going to show you the absolute simplest way to understand the difference between joins and relationships. So let's go. Welcome back to another Tableau video. Let's get right into it. So if you look at the documentation for relationships and joins, if you're kind of I say pretty experienced with Tableau and SQL and understanding how databases work and how to combine data. This will probably make sense to you with a little bit of practice and kind of rereading it. But if you're a beginner, you will have you will, you will really struggle to understand what this actually means. And whenever I see kind of a text-based explanation for things, I'm already like, I don't even read it a lot of the time because I'm like, this is not going to make sense to me until you show me an actual example. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So firstly, what is joins and what is relationship? So you've probably already seen this in Tableau. Here on the right, I've got a kind of just an image I got from Google. This is a join. So the joins, you're going to see the Venn diagram here. It's going to tell you inner, left, right, all that. And it's basically taking two data sets. You're saying how they're going to relate, and you're going to mash them together into a brand new table. So the two original ones are gone, and all you're left with is a combined table. All right, simple explanation. The other one is something called relationships. So Tableau made a change about a year or two years ago now, maybe, where relationships is the default way to combine data. Now, they have you know a variety of reasons for this, which I'm not going to get into, but it's not that one is better than the other. It's just understanding what they're for. Sometimes a join is what you need. Sometimes a relationship is what you need. Depends on what you're trying to solve and what data you have. So let's get into a very simple example, and we're going to do this in Excel. So starting here at the top, and let me create some space here so we're not distracted. All right, so we have two data sets right here. So this is pretty standard stuff you're going to do when it comes to combining data. And we're going to talk about how does a join actually work. So on the left side, you'll notice I have two rows that say orange. And that is basically a duplicate. Sometimes a duplicate is a mistake in the data, but sometimes it could be records of the same person doing different things on different days, for example. So it's real data, but there's duplicates in there, right? And then we have, uh, I think a bit of my mustache got stuck in my mouth. Mm, there it goes. <laughs> Gross. All right. So then you have ones where it's just a single row, blue, green, no problem. And then on the right side, we have orange occurring once, blue, green, green, red. So if I were to do a, let's say, an inner join on this, right, to combine them, what's it going to look like? Well, how does an inner join actually work? So let's bring this back up. See here, it's going to try and match up every single combination that I have. So let me get my drawing tool. It's going to go orange to orange. Actually, maybe I'll scroll down a little bit more. Okay. So it's going to go orange to orange, and it's going to create a row of data for me, which is this one right here. Then it's going to go orange to orange. It's going to create another one. Right now, you can see this one has duplicated. Right, so this extra ten doesn't exist here. But in a join, it's gonna try and try and connect every single possible relationships. I won't say relationship. Every single type of common uh, value between the two fields as it can. Right, maximum amount. So that's why you end up with this second orange value here. It's going to try and connect these two together. Okay. Now, in the case of blue, there's only one blue here and one blue there. So you're only going to get one row. Now, with green, I have one on this side and two on this side. So it's going to go green to green, which is this one right here, and then green to green, right, which is this one here. That's why you notice that there's a 50 here and a, oops, and a 50, which is this one. 50 to 50, and then you also have 50 to 20, which is this one right here. So that's how you end up with a new table. So is that good or bad? Well, the answer is it depends on what you're trying to do. Say we're, say this value here is profits for the year. So really, if before we combine them, right, the total profits for the year, if I was to do a summation on this, and you probably can't see it because of my face, but the answer is 105. That means after the after we combine the data, 
and then we do a sum of this column here, are we going to get the same value as this one up here? And the answer is no. Because we have duplicates on both sides, it's actually generated more data for us. So here is the new sum. And notice we're getting 155 instead of 105. And that could be bad because it means we're claiming we're making more profit than we actually are. So in this case, a join is not the correct method to join them together. Okay, so how do you solve this problem? How do we preserve this 105 all the way through combining two data sets together? Okay, this is where relationships come in. So let me bring up relationships. Okay, S same exact data set. Here we go. And again, it's going to connect together in a certain way. But the difference with a relationship versus a join is that the aggregation right so if you don't know the word aggregation it's like sum minimum maximum uh, what are the other ones average median all, all those aggregations right in a join it happens after you've brought them together okay so if i go back to the join in tableau in terms of order of operation the first step is the data modeling where you're going to bring the data sets together we're going to do a join and then when you go into visualization mode it's actually going to be doing this sum right here this aggregation it happens after you join the data together a relationship the aggregation happens before the data gets joined right and this is a really nice way for tableau to preserve the values now i stress that is a simplified way of saying it because uh, this is a relatively simple data set and Tableau has some pretty fancy stuff working in the background, but this is a good stepping stone to understand how it all functions. So let's carry through the analysis and see what happens. So we still uh, we still have the same relationships here from left to right. So you got two orange, one orange here, blue, blue, one green, and then two greens. So before we actually join them together, right? And I don't want to say join, before we combine them together, we're going to aggregate them first. So you can see here, you got 15, uh, 10 and 15, which becomes 25. So basically we're like squeezing the data down so that we only have a unique set of values. Okay. And then here on the other side, we do the same thing. So you got orange and blue, which only exists once and the green exists twice. So 50 plus 20 equals 70. Okay. So again, we're squeezing it. Now that we've got these two squeeze down uh, tables, now we can, we can combine them side by side. If I do a summation now of this one, you see I'm getting 105. On the right side, we're getting 110. If we go back to the raw data, what are we getting? 105. And this one doesn't, it's not to include red. 110. So Tableau preserves those values. Okay, so that is the power of relationships. Now, how does this actually happen in Tableau? Does it happen at the very beginning? Actually, no, it happens um, when you build the visualization. So let me go back here. When we set up these relationships, maybe I can zoom in, right? When we set up these relationships, we actually haven't combined anything yet. All we're telling Tableau is how does this data source relate to this one, but we're not combining them. The combining happens once we go into design mode and we start bu building visualizations. So when you know when you're bringing measures in, you're bringing dimensions in, Tableau will determine based on what you're bringing in, what to aggregate first, okay? And it will do it behind the scenes, you don't even have to think about it. But a good thing to do always, doesn't matter how good you get, is whenever you're doing relationships, or whenever you're doing joins, you always want to do some sort of validation. So a validation could be as simple as the total count for this is 105, total count for this is 160. So I can do a whole bunch of joins and relationships and cleaning and data and modeling and all that kind of stuff in between. What should happen um, is that I preserve the quality of the data so that at the end, I still have the same values. If I end up with something like this where I'm actually generating more information and it's kind of, it's distorting the, well, it's not distorting, it's making it wrong. Well, then I'm losing the quality, right? Now this can happen for very simple data sets. So you always want to validate somehow before you deliver it to your stakeholder because there's nothing worse than delivering something and saying, well, sorry, I got it wrong, 
Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. But if you want to learn a lot more about blends and relationships and joins and all that kind of stuff, um, I do have it on my website because it's one of the most requested things in terms of training that I've gotten over the last 10 years. Please do more joins, more blends, more relationships, more LODs, all that kind of stuff. So if you go to the website, link is in the description, you'll see a Tableau bundle pack, which you can sign up for. And here in the very first section of expert, it goes through everything in regards to joins and relationships and blending. So heaps there for you to consume. That's it for me tonight. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.